Hey, uh, everyone. I was going to say good morning, but it's not morning everywhere anymore. Um, my name's Dave, and we're going to get started here. Um, I'm here to talk about distributed traffic monitor health monitoring, um, which is which is a mouthful, um, but should be exciting nonetheless. A little about me. Um, I've been at Comcast for 15 years. I actually started at Comcast as an intern. Uh, moved around a little bit and ended up on the CDN team about six and a half years ago. Um, been here ever since. Started as a software engineer um, and worked my way up to now I'm a director on the, uh, I lead the CDN application engineering and ops team. Um, so we're responsible for all of the applications um, that run on the CDN, um, including Apache Traffic Control. Uh, I used to be the chair of the Apache Traffic Control Project, um, but Eric thankfully took that over. Um, and now I'm just a, an ATC PMC member, uh, as well as an ASF member. Um, over the course of my time on the CDN, I've developed in all of the ATC components. Uh, I don't know if I still have commits left uh, once all the Perl was removed from Traffic Ops, um, but at one point I was... Uh, I had commits in every single component of ATC. Um, it's been a while, though, um, since I moved to leadership, not as much time spent on writing code. Um, but I do still contribute a lot of um, troubleshooting, uh, debug, um, and a little bit of SRE, um, site reliability engineering, um, when I when I can. Um, it helps keep me close to the code and, and close, close to the product helps me feel like I'm involved in the day to day. Uh, when I'm not working, um, I enjoy coaching my son's baseball team and my daughter's softball team. Um, and you can see on the right here, we had a good summer. Um, the picture on the top there, my son won his uh, 9U championship. They called it the World Series. Uh, it was really cool. And on the bottom, my daughter uh, this summer, her team in 10U won. Uh, it was second place um, in the state, um, but still pretty good accomplishment uh, for them. So yeah, I get a lot of joy from from coaching kids um, and teaching them new things. It's, it's very rewarding, something I really enjoy. Enough about me. Uh, we're here to talk about Traffic Monitor. Um, traffic Monitor is a Golang application that implements the CDN health protocol. Uh, every cache in the CDN is checked um, via HTTP um, over IPv4 or IPv6 now, um, or both. Um, we, we look for vital stats, and based on the stats, um, Traffic Monitor declares cache as healthy or unhealthy. Um, it passes this information along to Traffic Router. Um, so Traffic Router can know how to make routing decisions, whether to include a cache in the routing response back to a client. Uh, it gets that information from Traffic Monitor. Um, that data is also used. Um, there, the, the stats data is also used by the Traffic Stats component, um, which is then sent to InfluxDB to, you know, we, we hook Grafana up to that to build all kinds of, of neat um, charts and graphs um, to, to keep an eye on the CDN and its performance. Um, a little bit of the core functionality of Traffic Monitor. Um, Traffic Monitor pulls all reported and admin down caches for their status, um, and it uses those to, to make health decisions. Um, we pull, uh, these, are, these are obviously just administrative statuses that you can set in Traffic Portal or, or Traffic Ops via the API um, and ultimately in the database. Um, admin down caches are, are in this list because they're in the way that we use that is it's down for a, a short amount of time. It's administratively down and it could come back into service at any point um, and, and be set to report it. Um, so we want to keep an eye on that and make sure that it remains healthy just in case it does get set back to report it. Um, there's also other statuses that caches could be in if it's an offline status. Um, you know, it's not going to be um, monitored at all, and it won't be in the configuration at all that's past the traffic router. Um, if it's in an online status, it's not gonna be pulled for health, but it will be included and assumed healthy in the list that's returned to traffic router. 
Um, so that's important to know if you have a cache that's set to online, um, traffic monitor is not checking the, the health of it, but it is assuming it's healthy. Um, so reported is the, is the way to be for caches. Um, traffic monitor also does some basic problem detection just by the nature of what it does. Um, so via TCP, um, you know, it can check for, you know, connection, reset, timeouts, et cetera, as it's doing the HTTP polling. Um, and it also can do some problem detection on the application. Um, so if it's not, the application's not listening or ASTAT's content isn't correct, um, traffic monitor will, will mark the cache unhealthy. There are some configurable thresholds you can set in traffic monitor. Um, so NIC throughput is probably the biggest one and the one that uh, most of the reporting um, as far as the thresholds go um, that traffic monitor does. So basically setting a bandwidth limit and in, in saying if, if this cache reaches 80 gigabits per second, um, let's start routing traffic away from it, um, for example. Um, load average is another one. Um, truth be told, it's not my favorite metric. And um, I think we'll start at some point looking at a way to see what's better, what we can do better than load average. I just think it's uh, load average is, um, it, it might be a good like canary in the coal mine type thing, but with the way that, that you know, at least our hardware platform runs today, I mean, that, that load average can get pretty high and, and the server's still barely breaking a sweat. Um, so it's really dependent on, on the amount of, of cores you have in there. Um, there's also some configura configurable thresholds um, that you can set on the application. So for example, per delivery service, um, you can say, you know, if this delivery service gets over 10 gigabits per second, um, start start routing traffic uh, or, or I guess denying traffic to that delivery service. We, there's also a, a, a sister setting, I guess you can call it for a, a DNS or a yeah, DNS override. So basically, if if the if it hits the threshold, then we'll we'll return a C name to a different place. Um, traffic monitor does health and stat polling. You can set separate separate intervals for those. Um, in production on our CDN, uh, the health is two seconds and the stat poll is six seconds. Um, and this is something that we would like to get much 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 faster. Um, sub second, of course. Um, and, and into, you know, maybe the 100 millisecond range. Um, two seconds of an unhealthy cache on the CDN could be a long time, um, especially since that config then has to get passed down the traffic router, which could take another couple of seconds. Um, so we would like to, to react as fast as possible to unhealthy caches. Um, traffic monitors health protocol is considered optimistic. Um, so the health state of uh, all the peers, so all the traffic monitors that are online will talk to each other um, and they'll all get the health state from, e all, from each, each other. Um, and they all must agree on a negative state. Um, they don't all need to agree on a positive state, but they all need to agree on a, on a negative state. So if you have three traffic monitors, uh, one says a cache is healthy, two say a cache is unhealthy, we're going to keep it healthy because we're optimistic. Um, if all three say it's unhealthy, then it will be unhealthy. Um, this hasn't hurt us too much. Um, as far as we can tell, this has been a good thing. Um, one thing to note here is that with that optimistic health protocol, you do want probably at least three running um, at any time if, if you're going to deploy traffic monitor. So you don't get a split split brain uh, where there's just one, just two. Um, Traffic monitor also proxies configuration to traffic router. It proxies the CR config, which is the, the traffic router's app config. Um, so content router config um, and the cache health config. Um, so it proxies that configuration to traffic router. Traffic router could get that directly, could get the CR config directly from traffic ops, um, but it's, we decided to make it get it from traffic monitor so that we know that the CR config and the, the cache health config is, is in sync um, and traffic monitor has has the authority on that. Traffic monitor exposes data in a JSON format via API. Um, so all of the information that any of the systems are getting, um, including all of the stats, um, it's all available via API. 
Um, so it can be interacted with that way. Um, and there is a pretty basic, uh, we call it an engineering UI because it's not very pretty, um, but you can see the events and the, the health of each cache through there, the health of delivery services through there. Um, it also has like a, a proxy to the APIs. Um, so you can see all the API data in there, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, pretty simple UI, um, but useful nonetheless. Um, so here's what today's traffic monitor looks like um, if you were running it in production. So traffic monitor, um, starting at the top here, it gets its configuration from traffic ops. Um, there's a, a monitoring config that it gets, and there's also the CR config or the traffic router config that it gets. Um, and this is updated via snapshot. So an operator can go make their changes, and, and when they hit the snapshot button, um, that will be stored to the database, and that will be the configuration that Traffic Monitor gets. Um, down to the bottom here, Traffic Stats gets its data from the Traffic Monitor. Um, so it uses the Stats APIs, the Cache Stats and Delivery Service Stats APIs to get that data. Um, traffic Monitor currently monitors all caches in the CDN. Uh, all of our caches are currently Traffic Server. Um, you don't have to run traffic server, but traffic monitor does require an output that looks like the stats over HTTP plugin that's included in traffic server. So if you ran a different cache type, you would need to emulate that output format for a traffic monitor. Um, and I guess we do have one example of this in Comcast. And there is Grove, which is part of traffic control, which, which does this as well. Um, like I mentioned earlier, Traffic Router gets its config um, from Traffic Monitor. Um, so that's pretty high level, um, but that's how everything talks to each other right now um, without going into to, to, to too much detail. Um, next slide here. Um, so, so some of the motivations um, for making this change to distributed. Um, first of all, TM must pull every cache in a CDN. Um, that's fine if you're running a small CDN with, you know, tens or hundreds of caches. Um, but if you're running a CDN with thousands of caches, um, well, look at that. That's not an order. Um, if you're running thousands of caches, you know, that's, it's pretty resource intensive, uh, on the traffic monitor. And it's also very hard to get that stat poll or that the health poll. Um, much lower than two seconds if, if you're trying to pull, you know, 5,000 caches at once. Um, so some other limitations on traffic monitor. Traffic monitors uh, have to be deployed in central locations right now uh, where they can get to all caches. Um, so if you have caches spread out throughout North America, um, you're going to need to deploy your traffic monitors in places that have uh, accessibility to every cache in North America um, and can pull that in, you know, a pretty small time frame and get the data back, um, which which is is not super ideal. And honestly, not the, the way that we have it deployed um, in Comcast is we have these traffic monitors and national data centers. And that's not really the view that that a client would get. Um, they're not going to be inside the national data centers. They're outside. Um, of that and more on the uh, you know the client network, um, so it's not ideal. Um, traffic monitor can only scale verti vertically, not horizontally. Meaning, as you add more and more caches to your CDN, like I talked about, um, you know you're gonna need bigger, bigger boxes. Uh, we ran into this at Comcast where we started with pretty small VMs for traffic monitor. Um, then once we got to a certain threshold of caches, we had to get even bigger VMs for traffic monitor. And then once we got to thousands of caches, um, we ended up moving traffic monitor off onto its own dedicated bare metal hardware, um, basically a cache spec, um, just so it could, uh, so it could handle monitoring all of these, these caches at once. Um, so obviously that's not ideal either. You'd rather um, scale horizontally and have many traffic tra traffic monitors split that up, um, which is saying the same thing again. Um, so in order to solve our impending scaling issues, as well as improve our ability to make better and faster health decisions, um, we need traffic monitor to run in a distributed fashion. 
um, instead of the current all or nothing fashion. Um, so that sums up the motivation uh, behind this change. Um, some key high level requirements we had um, when talking about making traffic monitor distributed. First of all, traffic monitor must be capable of being configured to monitor all or a portion of a CDN. Um, we don't want to lose the ability to monitor all of the CDN um, because, you know, there are smaller CDNs. And I mean, we even have a couple smaller CDNs that don't need uh, traffic monitor to be this highly distributed thing. There's only a few caches in there. It can monitor it, no problem. Um, but we also need the ability uh, to separate that out and distribute that out. Um, traffic monitor must provide an API to get the health status of all caches in the CDN. Um, so basically, the, this requirement was around uh, traffic router. So traffic router needs to still be able to pull any traffic monitor in the, the CDN and get back the cache status, uh, the cache health states of all caches. Um, we don't want traffic router to have to figure out which traffic monitors it needs to go to to get the health state of any specific cache. It should be able to just make the same request it does today um, and get back all the health data that it needs. Traffic monitor must provide an API to get statistics um, generated by all caches in the CDN. Um, same idea here. We don't uh, want traffic stats or whatever other stats clients you might have that are using the traffic monitor API. Um, to have to figure out which traffic monitors they need to pull to get all of the, the data. Um, they should be able to pull any traffic monitor and get the data that way. Um, same thing, traffic monitor. Oh, traffic monitor must provide an API to get the status of the caches it monitors. So this is a different separate API that's just for the caches that that traffic monitor is monitoring. So we'll have one API that gives you all of the caches and another API that says, these are just the caches that I monitored. Um, and this is gonna be useful for the inter um, or intra TM group polling. So all of the peer traffic monitors in a traffic monitor group need to make sure that they all agree on the health of the caches that they are polling. Um, so that's why this requirement is here. Uh, I have some pictures later that that should help. Traffic monitor must provide the ability to have more than one traffic monitor monitor the same cache and come to, to consensus on the health of the cache. Um, pretty basic stuff. We have this today by just deploying multiple traffic monitors. It'll be the same. You have to deploy multiple traffic monitors, um, but you shouldn't have one traffic monitor per traffic monitor cache group. So this is really just a, our traffic monitor group. So this is really just a, the, this requirement isn't really satisfied in code, it's satisfied by deployment. Traffic monitor must ensure all caches are monitored upon failure of any TM server or physical location. Um, so uh, I have an, another a picture on this as well, um, but if we have a group or a traffic monitor that's monitoring a group of caches um, and it can no longer get to those caches or that traffic monitor um, isn't polling for whatever reason. Um, the other traffic monitors need to notice that we have caches that are unpolled and make sure that those caches get polled. Um, we don't want to be in a situation where we have a group of caches that are unpolled um, and could become unhealthy and we're not reacting to that. Or they they were last status was unhealthy and they're now healthy. Um, so to some design, design decisions we made um, based on these requirements, First of all, traffic monitors will be organized into one or more traffic monitor groups. Um, so this is you know, based on the, the cache group functionality that's in traffic control right now. Um, we're gonna use that same idea and monitor or add our traffic monitors into those traffic monitor groups. Um, they'll be called cache groups, but there'll be traffic monitor groups. Um, traffic monitors will determine which cache groups to pull based on the number of cache groups divided by the number of TM groups. So if you have six cache groups and three TM groups, then each TM group will monitor th three, uh, two cache groups. Uh, I lost my math in my head there. Um, pretty simple math, pretty simple to figure out. Um, 
The way that it's gonna figure it out is traffic monitor is gonna determine it based on the geolocation provided on the cache group object. So on the cache group object, we have a lat and long or a physical location that you can set. Um, and then traffic monitor will use that to figure out what are my closest N until it gets to the number that it needs to pull. Um, and, and that'll be the ones that are pulled in each traffic monitor group will do the same. So if you have three traffic monitor groups, one on the East Coast, one on the, the uh, East Coast of the US, one Central US, one West Coast US, um, you know, they should be monitoring the cash groups that are in those same regions as them. Um, we will provide a uh, profile and parameter override functionality. So if you want to hard code a certain traffic monitor group to monitor a certain cache group, um, you can definitely override that. Um, traffic monitor is going to gain at least two new config options. Um, the first one, distributed polling enabled, the default will be false, um, which means uh, if it's set to false by default, then it will pull all of the caches. Uh, when set to true, um, it's going to run in distributed mode. Um, and when set to false, it'll run into legacy mode. Um, stat polling disabled, um, the default will be false here. Um, this is one of the design, design decisions we had to make um, in that we're going to just tackle the health polling first with, with the distributed traffic monitor. Um, and the stat polling, we're not going to mess with. So stat polling is going to be done on all caches still. That's less critical to the health right now. Um, but um, you know, in the future, that's something that we'll, we'll look to, to implement. Um, so stat polling disabled will be a new config when set to true. Um, TM will not do stat polling for caches when set to false. TM will do stat polling for caches. Um, it must be set to true if distributed polling is enabled, um, in phase one. And I'll get into the phases a little bit later. So we understand what that means. Um, all TMs participating in the health protocol should be in the same mode, distributed or legacy. We don't want to run um, a mix because then that uh, you know kind of defeats the purpose of distributed traffic monitor, first of all. Um, but it also um, could cause some problems with, with the traffic monitors trying to get status from each other. Um, so if one T, you know, one TM's in a TM group and run in distributed mode, it's going to assume that all of them are the same. TM's will peer with all other TM's within their TM group, as well as at least one TM from all other TM groups. Um, so within the TM group, um, think cache groups, TM groups, um, all of the TM's will talk to each other. They will all come to the, the, um, the consensus, which we talked about earlier. Um, but then each one only needs to talk to one TM in a different TM group to get their status as well, to put together the full overall CDM picture. Um, TM is going to use round robin to pull TMs in other groups. So it's not always talking to the same TM in, in a different TM group. Um, it'll round robin through the TMs there. If TM determines that a cache group is unpolled, it will pull it. Um, and first of all, it will log an error, um, which by itself isn't super useful, um, but that's where you know monitoring alarm and systems need to be looking for that, pick it up, alarm on it. Um, but then the closest TM group distance-wise should be the first to pull the unpolled cache group. Um, now, exactly how the algorithm's gonna work um, and, and how we're gonna do this, I think, is, is a bridge we haven't crossed yet um, but this is the, the design decision that we made. Um, and when we start implementing the code, I'm sure we'll, we'll, uh, zoom in on this and figure out exactly how we want to do this, um, which was the next thing for safety. A profile parameter will allow for an override of the number of cache groups to pull. Um, so, um, if this this just makes it so we don't get it so that a, a traffic monitor is monitoring way too many cache groups and back to basically the legacy mode. Um, so we can override it there. If 
TM cannot pull a TM in a different TM group, it'll log an error and try a different TM in the same TM group uh, before failing. Um, and then once it fails, you know, that's when it'll, it'll kick in the, the algorithm to pull the caches itself. Um, so those are the design decisions that I come to. All of this is on list. I have the resources um, at the end of this talk if anybody wants to go through. Um, we're still pretty early in this um in, in the code of this so you know always welcome to to new discussions on that um but we did you know we have our we do already have a blueprint that's been merged and all that um distributed tm polling so this is how it looks um from the traffic monitor perspective so we have two different traffic monitor groups here um and we have six cache groups um so the the traffic monitors will take a look at the location of their TM group, as well as these cache groups, and figure out what um, what the best three cache groups to monitor. In this case, for the top traffic monitor, it was one, two, and four. And for the bottom TM group, it was three, five, and six. Um, the traffic monitors in the group will talk to each other, um, but they only need to talk, um, so this group only needs to talk to one traffic monitor in this group to get the peer polling data. If we have three traffic monitor groups and the same six cache groups, um, as you can imagine, not much changes except now that each each traffic monitor uh, monitors two cache groups instead of three cache groups. Um, and of course, still all of the traffic monitor groups um, need to talk to each other. If a traffic monitor group cannot pull a cache group, um, so this polling breaks for whatever reason. Um, this traffic monitor happens to be the closest to cache group four. Um, don't, don't call me out on the fact that in the first slide, this one was pulling four, but now this one is not important. Um, this traffic monitor group now determines that it's the closest to cache group four and they don't have, it's not getting status back from cache group four from this traffic monitor. So it's gonna start pulling cache group four um, and then share that data with the other traffic monitors uh, in the other traffic monitor groups. Um, so this should help us ensure that, you know, we're not missing cache group data uh, when we're sending the, the, the health data back to traffic router. Um, from the control plank perspective, um, we still have traffic router, traffic ops, and traffic stats. Um, they, we still need all the interactions with traffic monitor. Um, in this case, you know, kind of, this is a visual representation of what we talked about earlier. Um, the traffic router is still going to talk to any group of distributed TMs to get back the health data and see our config. Um, so this could be any traffic monitor in that group. Doesn't really matter. They should all have the same data. Um, all of these TMs will get the, the data from traffic ops and have that available to return to traffic router. Um, one of the design decisions we made about the bringing the stats, uh, not doing stat polling in the distributed traffic monitors means that traffic stats is still going to need to get the stats data from legacy traffic monitors. So. There will be a, a legacy traffic monitor in a different status, um, which is not participating in the health polling, and it is only doing stats polling. Um, and that's where we'll point the traffic stats to. I have a migration slide coming up um, that should help clear this up a little bit. I know it's a little confusing, but we, uh, we determined that if we tried to do the stats and health polling at the same time, it would take a very long time to get this out. And so we went with an iterative approach, um, which was just to do the health polling first, since that was the most critical one um, for, for the CDN performance um, and availability. Um, some compromises, like I talked about, first of all, multiple phases. Um, so phase one, health polling only. Um, this means that all the stats polling is going to be done by a legacy traffic monitor that's going to be running with a new status, administrative status. Um, and, um, you know, that's where traffic stats is going to have to talk to. Um, in phase two, we'll get the distributed, we'll get stats polling distributed and we'll get that worked into the code. 
Um, I think we're there will be some discussions um, in the community on how we want to do that. I think now that we're looking at this, then maybe there's an opportunity to split those two things out and you could run those separately. Um, so stats polling and health polling maybe don't need to be um, all done from the same thing uh, or the same exact traffic monitor. Um, but I think there's more discussions to have around that once we get to phase two and really start uh, digging into that. Um, delivery service thresholds are not going to work with phase one of distributed polling. So if if you are running a traffic monitor and you are using those delivery service thresholds, um, like total client connections for a delivery service, overall delivery service bandwidth, et cetera, um, those aren't going to work because right now the stats polling is not going to work in legacy mode and it used the stats polling to determine health of a delivery service based on um, those thresholds. Um, so and it's unfortunate, but it was um, a decision we had to make. Um, and, and I don't know how many people actually use the delivery th service thresholds, um, but at Comcast, we weren't using them, at least not right now. Um, so, you know, I think we were we were OK with this um, and I don't think we got pushed back from the community about it either yet. <laughs> After this, who knows? Um, TM will use round robin when polling TMs and other TM groups. Uh, we had discussed maybe some different ways of doing this, like using a load balancer, some DNS tricks, consistent hashing, um, many different ways. We decided that uh, an easy compromise is TM will just use round robin. Um, just start at the top of the list, work its way through. Um, and one of the, the things when we initially set out to make traffic monitor distributed. Um, I think there was some hope that traffic ops wouldn't be the source of truth, uh, wouldn't be tightly coupled and be the source of truth. Um, but unfortunately, um, it still is for the distributed configuration. Um, not to say you can go implement your own um, web service that sends back or that that produces configuration that looks a lot like what traffic ops produces. Um, but at least for now, we're going to require traffic ops um, for that and as part of ATC. Um, a migration strategy. So how are we going to get from the legacy version of traffic ops to the uh, our traffic monitor to the distributed version? Um, first of all, we're going to assign, <laughs> assign TMs into TM groups. Um, so uh, create new TM groups. They'll be by location. Um, at least how we like to do this at Comcast. And so this is just a, uh, you know, kind of our plan here for others to use. We're gonna upgrade the offline TMs to latest version start first. We'll turn on distributed mode, we'll turn off stats collection, um, and then we're gonna do some comparisons. So um, we'll, we'll make write some tools to take a look at the legacy traffic monitors, which are still the source of truth, and the distributed traffic monitors, and make sure that all of the events are lining up. Uh, we're not missing cache groups all of that. Um, once we're happy with that, um, then we'll be able to, to go ahead and set our distributed traffic monitors to online. Um, but as I mentioned earlier, the stats polling won't work on the distributed ones anymore. Um, so <clears throat> we're gonna set at least one of the legacy TMs to a new status um, in traffic ops or traffic portal. Um, the example I gave was stats poll. I don't know exactly what we'll come up with. It doesn't really matter as long as it's not online or offline or admin down or one that's already used. Um, and then in the traffic stats configuration, um, there's a, a configuration option to set the status of TMs to poll. Um, and you'll change that to this new stat status. Um, so the stats poll status. Um, everything else uh, can be offline at that point. Um, a little bit about the roadmap. How are we doing? We got about five minutes. Um, distributed stat polling. Um, I, I touched on this a little bit earlier. Some decisions we have to ask ourselves is, do we want to break it out into its own thing? Do we want to provide a flag to do health stats or both? Um, these are conversations that we'll be having on list um, and, and work with the community to figure out exactly how we want to do this. I do think we have an opportunity now uh, to break that up if that's something we want to do. Um, 
health scores versus Boolean health status. Um, this isn't really related to distributed traffic monitor per se, but it is something that we're starting to think about. Uh, right now, traffic monitor has a Boolean status for the health of a cache. It could be one or zero, true or false. Uh, healthy, unhealthy, however you want to look at it, it's all Boolean. Um, <clears throat> we're kicking around the idea now. Um, no formal proposals yet, um, but we're kicking around the idea now of, of maybe providing a health score. Um, and so based on some different factors on the cache, maybe we say, you know, in, within this cache group, this cache is, a, you know, a 10 out of 10. Um, and then a couple other caches are a 3 out of 10. And so then traffic router can use that to determine which caches to prefer. Um, we think this would be really useful when um, caches are approaching um, bandwidth limits, for example. We can start steering less traffic to those and maybe steering more traffic to caches that aren't at that threshold yet, You know, of course, using our dispersion. Um, and there's probably several other uh, ways that we could use a, a health score versus just a Boolean health status. Um, we want to provi uh, provide the ability to integrate with external health monitoring tools. Um, so if you have other systems maybe that are that are monitoring your caches um, and they might have different ways of determining the health of the cache, um, you know, we want to be able to integrate with that and use that in our in our health determin determination. Um, so traffic monitor may think a, a cache is healthy, but maybe a third party system is like, wait, I have this metric says it's not. Um, we can integrate with that and, and get that data. Um, improved default polling me metrics. Um, I talked about this a little bit earlier as well. Um, maybe deprecate load average in favor of some other things, um, CPU, IO. Um, there's a bunch of different things we could do. Um, I think it's time we probably start taking a look at that and seeing if if load average is, is still something we want to use and if not, like what makes better sense. Um, and then finally, more decoupling between TO and TM, specifically around config and how TM gets its config. Um, don't really know what that looks like yet, um, but it's definitely something that's going to be on the roadmap um, for the future. Um, some resources here. Um, when I share these slides, you'll be able to get to these. There is a traffic monitor blueprint on the GitHub page. Go, It's merged now, so go to the blueprints directory. Um, there's a mailing list discussion about the high-level requirements and a mailing list discussion about the distributed traffic monitor design, which was uh, the design was a lot of what's in the blueprint, uh, but you can see those discussions there. Uh, we also have a traffic control traffic monitor channel on the ASF Slack. Um, please feel free to hop in there at any time uh, if you have any questions, and I'm sure someone will be happy to answer those for you. Um, so that's it. Let me see. Do we have any questions? What if the C GCF is one, seven cash groups, three TM groups? Um, very good question. So um, one of the TM groups will end up pulling uh, three cash groups, and the other two will pull two cash groups. I think that's the question you're asking. Let me know if it's not. Uh, will the existing cache status API endpoint remain and will provide all cache status for a CDN? Yes. Um, hopefully, I got that through in the talk, but we want the, the cache status API endpoint to remain the same um, for all of the CDN so that we don't need to change all of the components around traffic monitor, um, such as traffic router. Uh, yes, the pulling load on the cache. So our um, traffic monitor is one way to pull health from caches. And yes, it does add load on the caches. Um, but we do have other sources, at least within Comcast, that provide us some different metrics that we can't always get from traffic monitor, um, more from a client perspective. Um, so like probes, for example. Um, and those are pulling the caches anyway, and we want to be able to use that data in traffic monitor if clients outside of the network are seeing something different than maybe our traffic monitors inside of the network um, would be. Um, 
Yeah, load average. I mean, we've um, so so Susan said in my experience, the load average is an excellent report of contention, which isn't always captured by CPU utilization. But you are right. What is a high load average is a very server environment dependent. Yeah, we're seeing that a lot with our new um, our new hardware platform, where the you know the the load average can get you know up to or, or even over the amount of of CPU cores that we have, but the, the server is really not breaking a sweat. It's not actually having any sort of problems. Um, so we might be marking those unhealthy when they're not unhealthy. Um, so I, I don't think we want to just switch to CPU. I agree with you there. That's also not by itself, not a good one. Um, so I think we're, we're going to try to look and figure out what, you know, what the right things are. Um, what would be the health polling interval and TM peer polling interval in the distributed mode? I think from the the when we first deploy it, we'll probably keep it similar to today, where the peer polling interval is one second and the health polling interval is two seconds. Um, but once we understand the performance a little bit better and, and see how that works in reality, uh, we'll be looking to get both of those to um, sub second if we can. Um, and we'll be happy to share that data as we as we go on. Okay, well, I think I am out of time. Um, so thank you everybody for for coming. Um, if you have any questions, um, any more questions, you know, please feel free to reach out to us on Slack. Um, and we'll be happy to answer them there uh, or, or send an email to the list. So, thanks, everyone.